um, and then I'll go and I will shrink wrap that together. So how you do that is very simple. Is you just need a, a torch of some kind and then you just uh, lightly warm that up and you'll watch it shrink. You're going to be careful not to get too close and burn anything. Make sure all the wires are still inside. Um, it's pretty hot afterwards so give it a good little um, I just try and seal it up a bit, but you can. Hey guys, it's Cal from The Lighting Doctor here. I hope you guys enjoy this video with some more great landscape lighting tips. To learn more about landscape lighting, go and check out our website at lightingdoctor.ca or if you want to see what a real quality landscape light should look like, go and check out our Try It Before You Buy It offer where you can get a premium quality fixture at a discounted rate with your very own battery pack so you can go and test out how that light's going to look and feel what a real premium quality light should look like. So go and check us out at lightingdoctor.ca or go watch more videos on YouTube just by searching for The Lighting Doctor. First up is a rubber mallet used for landscape lighting. It's the first step, you know, we've placed our lights, we've ran all our wire, uh, we know where we've got to bury all that. Now we're actually going to go and set the lights. Um, like I always talk about, I just want to point out here what, what the importance of getting something like a, uh, a rubber mallet is, especially if you're doing path lights, because path lights are, you know, they're going to sit this much higher and you want those to be nice and stable. And there's some things you can do. You know, I know some guys that actually pour um, a little bit of dry, like quick, quick, quick crete in the hole uh, that helps it, uh, you know, become more sturdy and solidify. Uh, the only thing with that is if you're not quite sure yet if that's where you want to have those lights, then that's a pretty permanent solution. So it's a good solution, but you want to make sure that's where you want to have your light. Um, and the other thing, I actually had a guy stop by today as we were working on the street, and you know, he had asked, you know, how much for a light uh, because we had a kid who just came and you know, kicked our light and it snapped and the whole spike and everything broke. And that's the, you know, why we always talk about getting a good quality fixture because you can tell when you're getting a good solid um, built ground stake as opposed to something cheap that you typically find off a big box store that you can, you can snap like this. So I mean, if you can snap it like this, what are the chances that's gonna stand up to a, a lawnmower, a dog, a kid, whatever it might be. So just spend the extra money and get something that's gonna, that's gonna last. Um, and I would always say is when you're placing your light, you know, you want to you want to dig a small hole to get it started because you're going to have to dig that out anyway to put all your excess wire in there. Um, but grab an extra, grab a rubber mallet. We usually send these in with our do-it-yourself kits just because it's going to help solidify and get that light into the clay where it's going to become nice and sturdy now. Again, so it's not getting knocked over as easy and that's a fixture that's going to be in there permanently for a long period of time. Once you've got that in, then you can go and just simply screw your light in. And then you can come back afterwards, make your connections and bury everything. Now, in all honesty, I don't even really know what this is called, but you can go and get this at any home improvement store in the garden aisle. It's basically um, a long metal stick with two prongs on the end that's great for pushing the wire a little bit deeper in the ground. So as you go and, and make your cuts or make your slits in the ground to get that wire in, you can use this uh, two pronged wire poker that we'll call it to just go and push that wire a little bit deeper into the ground to make sure it doesn't come up. Between using that and some extra landscape lighting stakes just, just to make sure, or sorry, landscape lighting staples just to make sure that wire doesn't come up, uh, it's a great way to go and do this and I urge any of you that know what this is called to please email me and send me the details of it but our two pronged wire poker is a great way to get that wire in the ground. Yes, yeah, so when it comes time to bury in your wire just you know creating a simple trench again you don't have to go super deep because it's just low voltage wire uh, but just making your life a little easier by creating a trench. If you can get a tool something like this uh, it works really, help, really well to help push that wire down nice and deep into the ground. And then if you need to, just as an extra uh, measure, just some landscape staples is not a bad idea to throw on the wire in a couple different places just to make sure it doesn't come up because if you go and put mulch up down on this uh, at a later date and you're raking that in, sometimes you can snag the wire 
a simple landscape staple will help keep that wire down so that you're not pulling up those wires. Um, the advantage is if you're using good connectors, you're, you don't have to worry about those pulling apart anyway, but if you want to help keep that wire buried, uh, landscape staples is a really easy way to do that. Another question I get asked all the time is how do I get under a sidewalk? Now, uh, the first thing I'll say is whether it's a driveway or sidewalk, if you're doing any kind of concrete work, whether you think you're ever gonna put in lighting or irrigation or whatever, put some kind of conduit under. Usually a, a piece of two inch PVC pipe or something like that, just so that you can slide wire, you can slide pipe, you can do any of that uh, after the fact, because it is way more of a pain in the butt to do it after the fact. Uh, so just slide some kind of sleeve in through. Uh, if it's a driveway, same thing, because you never know and all the time uh, people are limited by what they can do because they never put a sleeve in so But if it's after the fact and uh, You don't have a sleeve and you need to get under a sidewalk one of the things I'm going to recommend is uh, something like this. So this is called a um, Different things, but it's called like a roto drill uh, a Roto drill bit um, you can go on Amazon. This is like a 15 maybe $20 uh, Drill bit you can get a 24 or a 36 inch one um, and basically it just goes in that goes in any drill and you can just basically drill your way under so we've already done this one so I'm not gonna uh, take the time here to, to actually do it but basically all you need to do is dig back a bit of a trench and then just um, just drill away uh, and if your if your sidewalk is more than two feet you might have to drill you know halfway through on this side and then do the same thing on the other side and then just drill through on the other side, meet in the middle, and then you can easily slide your, your pipe through. Uh, we've tried lots of different methods. This is easily uh, the easiest one that we've come across. And again, it's a $15, $20 bit. You can go on Amazon, Google, um, or Amazon, and search Yard Butler, Roto Drill, and you'll find something like this. The King Innovation Instalite. So this is a great tool that we use to go in demo different types of lights to find out what light is going to look best where so all it is it's a very simple battery operated pack that just takes eight AA batteries and then what you can do with it is you can actually go and plug in your light whatever light it is whether it be a path light a wash light a wall light or an accent light you can go and just plug that into your insta light and you can go walk around your property and test out all the different areas that you're thinking of lighting and seeing which lights look best in which location and where you want to position those lights to get the best effect that you're looking for. It's a super, super easy tool that comes in all our do-it-yourself kits as well as our try it before you buy it offers where you can go and now test out these lights, feel the quality, see how they're going to look before you go and make any big decisions on your landscape lighting project. And so once you've got your lights selected again, uh, uh, the next step is really just going to start to place your lights um, where you think they're going to look best. You're going to want to come back at night anyway and see how they look when they're actually lit up. Um, but usually what I do just to get started, um, I've got my lights, I've kind of placed them everywhere around the property that I'm going to bury them uh, or place them. Then I grab my shovel, I just take a, a small hole so that I can get that ground stake started. Um, and then to make sure it's really secure, especially with a, a path light. And that's why you just want to get something that's got a good, good ground stake. I mean, this is an eight inch, super durable, uh, super heavy duty ground stake. And that's why we use stuff like FX Luminaire and all our um, all our projects. We get asked all the time, is there other brands out there? And of course there is, but um, we only offer what I know that I can guarantee and that I've worked with and that um, is really good bang for your buck so that's why we install these because the little things like that you just get a super duty ground stake you get a really durable light and then i go around and i take my rubber mallet uh, to really make sure really make sure i get that light nice and secure especially for path lights because they are a little bit taller uh they're more prone to get knocked over and stuff so i want to make sure that's nice and secure so with my ground stake i'm just gonna pound that in make sure i get it as level as possible take my fixture now and screw it in there and then I'm going to kind of step back and make sure that it's you know it's nice and straight um, and leave an extra uh, a nice little hole by the light so that I can do all my wiring connections bury that up uh, come back at night see how it looks and then tomorrow I'll come back and we'll just bury everything but uh, pretty simple just get those lights placed 
use a rubber mallet, uh, it's gonna save you a lot of headache and to make sure that light gets a lot more durable. There's one little trick, um, something called a hex baffle. Uh, where we use these is just to deflect the glare off the up light. So sometimes if you have an up light like this, that's close to an area where people are gonna be walking, um, it's not necessarily gonna be pointing in their, in their face or in their eyes or anything, but just to help keep that light a little bit more concentrated when they're looking at it from an angle, we're gonna use something called a hex baffle. It basically just slides underneath the cap of your light and goes over the lens, or sorry, over the light and under the lens and snaps back on. Um, and then all that's gonna do is just deflect the light that's being uh, maybe portrayed that way. So that somebody looking down, they're not gonna see a light shining right up in, their, in your eyes. So this is a great, uh, a great little tip to use anytime you have a high traffic area where people might be walking by the light so they're not shining directly into their eyes. Here we're going to show you how to light up your landscape from anywhere in the world using the Wyon Wi-Fi smart plug. So this is a great device and you can literally use almost any smart plug. The reason that we choose this one is that this is a, a, a smart plug that's actually designed to go outside and we've tested it. Uh, we're from Calgary, Alberta, Canada where we get temperatures that are minus 30, minus 40 degrees Celsius in the winter time, which is extremely, extremely cold. And I know this guy still works. And there's literally hundreds of smart plugs on the market that you can use the same way that you can use this one. Uh, but we use this one because it's tried and it's tested and I know that it works even in extreme, extreme conditions. But that being said, you can go, if you have a, a smart home system and they make an outdoor Wi-Fi smart plug, you can probably use that the exact same way with your existing transformer. But how we go and use this with this transformer is all we do is instead of plugging our transformers directly into the outlets, we just plug them into our Wyon Wi-Fi plug and then we plug this into the wall. And then now with the Wyon app, we can go and set all kinds of different programmer timing functions, uh, turn our lights on from anywhere in the world, uh, and do so many other cool things with it. It's also compatible with Amazon Alexa, which is also a really cool feature, and why we like using this. It's so much more high tech than a lot of the old uh, analog timers that are on the market that will typically work with a transformer like this. Uh, but if you wanna go and operate your lights from anywhere in the world, uh, we highly recommend the Wyon Wi-Fi smart plug. Hey guys, so on this project we're mounting a lot of lights up in the trees and kind of down lighting, getting those lights up nice and high, 20, 25 feet up there, shining through the branches so we can kind of create some shadowing down on the ground here. So the um, thing with that is the, the wire for the fixtures we have is only, um, it's only about 10 feet long so I don't want to have a big waterproof connector hanging halfway down the trees. Uh, one thing you can do if that's something you have is just go buy a junction box at uh, you know the Home Depot store or Lowe's or whatever it is um, and just put that connection in one of those just so you don't have to look at it, at least it hides it. Another option that we often use is these, um, these shrink wrap connectors. Again, you can get them at any home improvement store. Um, what I like about them is they are gel filled here. So once they get, sorry, a bee on me here. Um, but they are gel filled, so once they heat up, the gel actually seals around the connection, um, and they're very inconspicuous, so that's why I like using them. So um, we're gonna use them for this. So I've got my, my wire to my fixture, so I wanna make that a lot longer, and then I can make my connections down in the ground and stuff. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, um, I've got my wires, I'm just gonna slide my tube on, because you need to get your tube on the wires first. Uh, so we got that on and one thing I do is I cut, if you can see here, I cut one of them a little bit shorter than the other and I'll show you why I do that. It's, it's basically so I can cheat and just use one of these as opposed to having to use two, um, which same as any of the connections, usually you have to make two for each fixture because you have two wires, but we're gonna cheat a little bit and I'll show you how. Um, so basically what I've done is with my wire that's going out into the ground and my fixture wire, I have one longer and one shorter. So I'm gonna take the longer one and I'm gonna connect it with the shorter one and I'm actually just gonna twist tie those up. Just twist them together uh, nice and good. And then I'm gonna just bend one of them so it kind of looks like this, right? I don't know if you can see that. So I've got it uh, like this and I've just got it bent and then I'm gonna twist the other two together. Um, and I'll show you in a second why I do that. And then we're gonna twist that. is so that I can go now and I can 
bend these like this and the connections aren't going to be touching each other. See how they're separated? So they're not going to be touching each other inside the same um, inside the same shrink wrap connector. They're both in there. They're not touching. Something else you can do just to make sure is sometimes I'll, um, I'll put some electrical tape just around those just to make sure those connections don't touch. Um, and then I'll go and I will shrink wrap that together. So how you do that is very simple. Is you just need a, a torch of some kind and then you just uh, lightly warm that up and you watch it shrink. You're going to be careful not to get too close and burn anything. Make sure all the wires are still inside. Um, it's pretty hot afterwards so give it a good little um, I just try and seal it up a bit, but you can see the ooze is kind of coming out a little bit. So it's all waterproofed in there. And once it solidifies, it's pretty hard and you are not pulling those wires apart. So uh, if you're doing any tree lighting or need to uh, hide some wire and extend it and make a pretty inconspicuous connection, uh, shrink wrap connectors is a really good way to go. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys got some great do-it-yourself landscape lighting tips. Now, please be sure to go to our website at lightingdoctor.ca and check out our how-to page. It's full of great resources from our podcast to our video to our most frequently asked questions. And also check out our Try It Before You Buy It light where you can actually go now and get one of our premium quality up lights and a King Innovation Insta light, which is basically a battery pack now that allows you to go and run those lights and test them out on your pop property. Try it for 14 days. If you don't love it, send it back to us and we'll give you a full refund. And if not, you keep the light at a discounted rate and go and buy what you need for your project. So thanks again for watching. Please be sure to leave us a comment. We love your feedback. Have a great day.